Now that SWU is taking off, we need to remember to not get cocky. Welcome to the podcast where we discuss how to outmaneuver your opponents. I'm Faith and I'm here with J-Rod, Carbon, and his students. This chapter we will be examining the booming success of the game, the red-hot market of singles, and whether SWU can be a top 5 TCG. Before we start, be cunning and hit that like button, and turn your aggression on that subscribe button. So guys, you got any more of those $90 boxes? We can clearly see that the game is popping off. What are your guys' thoughts on the current state of the market? Well, I mean, it's been a pretty kind of crazy past week. We kind of got went from the mentality that, you know, there's stuff like everywhere, right? Kind of to now it's it sounds like their most places are sold out, right? Running out of product or and we got an official announcement. Was it yesterday from FFG? I believe on their Twitter talking about that they kind of have a plan in place, but it's just going to be more of a they're going to slow down releasing their remaining product, right? Which essentially means that there's going to be, you know, quite a slowdown for the until set two. They're they, they're, they, they're trying to spread it out. They're trying yeah, not to exactly. So there's they're, some product available most of the time until the next reprint hits for yeah. drafts and stuff. So the, yeah, so they're trying to like not like dump it all, so it's not getting like just sold out immediately, right? Because I think that's the really important aspect of it is just keeping limited play in particular going, right? And product is crucial for that. And so mm-hmm. I kind of like that approach, but it overall, it's, it's, well, it's, you know, it's both a good, it's a bittersweet thing, right? It's, it's awesome that the game is doing this well, but it sucks that there's, you know, some stores are not able to get the product that they want to be able to sell or play limited with. For sure. But I mean, they did say FFG, this is the highest sales they've ever had for a game period in their game history. So, yeah. and that is phenomenal. I cannot, that's express. pretty cool. Like they, they, made a gamble and right now it's paying off handsomely let's hope they keep the momentum into the next sets and stuff and are able to control the supply of the remaining stock they do have until a reprint can come i mean this is like very different though than like how like a Lark- larkana one happened where that one was like just there wasn't anything anywhere like there's Nowhere. such a limited release and such a big hype that like no one got any like, no this one. was like like everyone that basically wanted something in the beginning got it and then, like, then there was folks, like, after when, like, oh, I want to play this game now. Like, they might have missed out a little bit. Yeah. But, like, I don't think that's a major problem because the people who were, like, die hard into it before the game supporting uh, it got everything. They, they got, like, yeah, you can get cases upon cases upon cases. Like, I still have stores locally that would still sell me boxes right now for, like, under MSRP, which I think is fantastic. So it's, it's a really weird but great situation i don't think that we've ever seen from another tcg starting out where like they printed like a ton of the game but the demand was just like super high we're like we're, st- we're still having some shortage i'm putting quotes here in air quotes issues and it's not even really shortages like but like we have some cards like vader who's at i'm looking right now current market price is 84 dollars, so he went down a little bit because he peaked at 92 earlier today but like other than that like it's you know, the prices are relatively cheap other than some of the top legendaries, like for like the rares and that kind of stuff. So you can build most of your decks pretty easily, I feel like. Right? Yeah. I mean, anything that's not top tier, though. Because, I mean, let's be serious. Well, you can build Sabine or... for like, you could probably build Sabine for what, 30, 60 for like $100 in total, which like for a TCG is not a ton. I mean, I come from Magic where like, you know, a, a standard deck can be like 250 and that's your mono red a- aggro deck. You know what I mean? Like, so a hundred bucks is like the land base for magic typically for a. Right. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. A hundred so, bucks is on the cheap side, but if you want to play anything that's not a hero aggro, it's going to cost you a significant chunk of change. I think that's a good, like, I do think there's some part where you do want some cards to, I think, hold value. And as long as there are decks that are accessible, I think Magic's a great point to bring up because the land base is usually so expensive that in order to build any kind of deck, you need you need to spend the money. In this, there are those options which are relatively affordable. And even with Sabine, you could still make a che- you could still make cheaper versions of decks. There's a lot of very strong commons and uncommons in this game, which I think are really good and help you in the progression of your deck even if you don't have the whole thing maybe you have one vader and that's okay though you can still have a deck and that has a lot of good parts in it now the there's a kind of a double-edged sword to the fact that commons and uncommons have more power 
is that it sucks powers away from the rares and legendaries and makes the rares and legendaries that are actually really good really, really, really expensive because all of the other rares and legendaries are, you know, kind of worthless. You know, yeah. nobody, nobody wants those. They only want these ones. And so it's that's why we're seeing the high prices on what it is because there's no replacement for Vader. There's no replacement for a Boba. Right. Yeah. I mean, the other thing, though, is like, there's cards like Millennium Falcon that I think are on the similar level to like, and, and like Luke, for example, too, right? Luke right now is calling sitting at $38, significantly less than Vader, but I'd put him on similar power levels for Vader, but there's just no top tier deck for him. And like Millennium Falcon is similar power level to what I would say Boba Fett. But again, there's there's not that many top tier meta decks with Millennium Falcon. So I think that those are two cards where like I'd want to buy them now if I could potentially not financial advice, but I would consider trying to pick up some of those because I think that those are cards that like in the future, when the card pool expands and we can actually get a yellow hero deck, that's actually like a top tier deck. I think Falcon will probably go be in this market here, like a 40, $50 dollar card compared to where it's $20 right now. Yeah. yeah there, and there's a, there's a couple of those, this set that are like, like, like legendaries and, and rares that I think like they are good cards. They might just not have the support yet. I think another big one in that category is like Force Lightning, mm -hmm. which like on paper is an insane card, but it just doesn't really have, I mean, the more it needs more Force units to support it. So that card's, I don't think that card's that expensive right now to pick up. I think, so, I think it's $10 or less for the regular. It's, yeah, it's 970, excuse me, 975. Yeah. So you can like, you know, you can pick that up and, and there are decks that you can play that in, play them like, like Vader and Grand Inquisitor. But as we get more, you know, leaders and, and units that support that, you know, I think that card can go a lot better. And so, you know, same with Falcon, like you're talking about. So, yeah. The most obvious ones of these, I think, are the double aspect uh, legendaries, only because mm -hmm. they're so limited now because there's only three cards that really support that type of build. But then as we get more, then those decks yes. are going to become way better. Exactly. You said it's going to add more and more, and those decks are going to become more attractive, even though I still think this set has some room for those monocolored decks to uh to explore yeah yes yeah you know, they do have some spot now but i think long term they're going to have some more interesting they're all they're only going to get better presumably oh, yeah. one some and like so a, a really good example of this i think is command which command as a card if you're paying four for command that card is insane right i think we can agree that card is nuts at four um especially you know being able to kill something or being able to do two experience while also Just ramping at the same time ramping into totally especially strong. if you have a five cost hero yeah and, exactly. and then deploy the turn and yep. you play command is really good yeah it's so it's so strong but the thing is is the other two double green cards we got general krell and attack pattern delta are cool. nowhere near that power level really right um yeah general krell might actually be the worst rare in the set yeah i don't know yeah. that's hard. Question mark? I don't know. Maybe, about that maybe not. Maybe not the worst, but he's not. Well, he's not name a yeah. name a name a worse one. Name a worse one. Go ahead. Okay, hold on. Let me let me just take a quick peek through the cards. Hold on. Come on, you guys just didn't slay. Oh, oh, come failure. on, man. That was such an easy alley. No, yeah. First of all, first of all, no, no. Thank first you, of all, it's it's galactic ambition. So you're both wrong. No, I would rather have galactic ambition. Galactic ambition is better. Uh, yeah. But, but no. going back from singles back to box prices for a moment with <laughs> the. What was really cool about this is that there was the section for those that wanted it. You could buy them for ninety dollars on TCG Player yes. Box. So anyone that wanted to play could play. A lot of the times, what happens, it seems like with other games, the scalpers will buy it out right away and then try to flip it. Reduces the supply as markets go lower. Supply with high demand, prices go up. But in this game, the supply was big at first because people looked at FFG and said, "Oh." This company has a track history and not a good one. Yeah, they and did not believe in it. That scared people away. And then there was kind of a little bit of panic selling at the beginning. But then, as we have all know, because we've been playing this game for nine months, people started playing the game and they're like, oh, I actually like this. This is fun. And then mm -hmm. that got more people interested. Making your game for limited is so awesome. Something that I'm so glad that Swoo has because it makes me want to keep opening boxes. I mean, I've got I've got a good amount of my collection. Don't have it all yet. But the fact that it's like, oh, I can go still use this product by drafting, playing sealed with my friends. I love that. And that's that's been really great. And limited is really great to even the playing field with people that don't have collections, right? Mm -hmm. 
It's a great so, way to like it's a great way to like you get a little initial product, right? And then you're able to kind of expand your collection with draft, right? And just you're getting to play the game and get new cards for your collection at the same time, right? That's pretty sick. So pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and we, I'll say with this go ahead. I was gonna say we we also see a little spike in a lot of the showcase cards that we haven't touched on a lot in the podcast, which I think is something that I I, I kind of expected personally. I didn't expect many of them to stay under a hundred dollars. I think like the cheapest one right now is IG and his market price is one twenty, but the cheapest one you can buy online right now is one forty five. Who knows? Um, maybe next week that'll go up. Yeah, I mean, I think the showcase is like being so close to Vader. Hello. It's just something that shouldn't be a thing. And like, I think as the game grows and Twin Suns becomes a more popular format than I expect it to be, I expect it to kind of like somewhat ish compete with Commander that people are going to want to have the showcases for their commanders. Um, I know I will, at least for like decks that I plan on playing for a long time. Like I've mentioned before, Rex and Ahsoka, I will 100% be acquiring those showcases. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's any ones in this first set that I necessarily really want for that. I think if I had to pick one, it would probably be Han. I think Han is like probably always going to be relevant in Twin Suns just because of his ability to to ramp for free. Ramp. And the art is really nice. The art is, art is yes. top tier. But uh, yeah, I did actually see a Grand Inquisitor opened up today at my local store. Ooh, uh, so that was pretty cool. Give me a Darth Maul and Qui-Gon Jinn showcases. That's what I'm looking for. Be pretty sick. Uh, with, with the, uh, with the restocks, showcase, with the restocks that they talked, FFT talked about, it should, I do want to let everyone know, like if you're feeling FOMO, there will be more products. Yeah, just wait, just wait. You don't have time. to buy. Yeah, you don't have to buy into the hundred fifty dollars boxes. They have gone down a little bit since, but like, if you can be patient, things will drop. I don't think Vader is going to stay at ninety two or go to even if it goes to a hundred, it'll come down. We're going to get more stuff, and the thing is, people want the cards as well, and so FFG is going to respond to that in the way that they need to. Yeah, I think I think this, like, I'm almost glad that this is happening now because this now sets the tone for them for future sets of it's like okay we need to print so much of this and maybe and always always have some sort of backup plan in place right or just like to do like you know keep products in reserve and do you know special releases to stores that are for you know for sure doing limited that type of stuff with that product right you know whatever whatever that looks like like right that that this is you know this is the tone that that has been set essentially right that they, they know what they need to do going forward. One final well, thing, just for those that aren't familiar with TCGs, FFG also can't just press a button in the back and have a hundred pallets of of cases. It does take time for them to manufacture and getting that number right because they don't want to make too much. They're they have to make the right amount, and so it's these things aren't going to just happen right away. But they are a business, and they're going to respond to if we show them that we want their business, they're going to make product. It, it'll take a little bit, but it'll come. But the key thing there. Is they have printers in the United States, yeah, and that is going to allow them to much easier respond to printing needs, not having to ship it overseas in a shipping shipping shipper ship ship ship. And I'll say the best thing about this whole um, situation that we're in is that it will give confidence to the financial backers of the game. That this is something that they should maybe double down on or whatever. Like, like this first yeah. set was like, wow, like this this blew away they even said in their thing that it blew away even their wildest expectation how successful this launch was and like i hope all the staff at ffg are getting massive raises or bonuses or whatever and that we'll get even more stuff coming in the near future for this game because hopefully it means only good things for the future of this game and we're all in it for the long run, and we've been really thankful that FFG has shown that as well by having sets planned out to set seven. So don't think this is the end, guys. It's not a one, one-time one bump. They're going to keep doing things, so we'll have to be along for the ride. As we've seen the markets are going to the moon, how's our local scene been looking? So my area is a little weird. We weird. have a, Yeah, we have a ton of stores. So like tonight where I went to my store and we drafted with six people, and it was a good amount. And we actually had one person teaching two other people how to play. So we okay. actually had nine. And one, one of the other people that works at the store was learning a different game as well. So there's about 10 SWOO players there. I mean, we had a couple of guys that couldn't show up. So we have about like 15 floating in and out that didn't show up today. 
Um, and we ended up drafting with six, which was great and fun. However, we have another store like 20 minutes away that's running a premiere event at the same time and same date. Mm, um, so like, so it's like we have like 25 to 30 players within like 15, 20 minutes of each other, but they're split between two stores. And that's the problem where I live is like there's a lot of stores like every like 15, 20 minutes there's a game store, which is great. But it's bad when they don't coordinate days where you can just like then go to all the stores. So the local scene is great. I've been to multiple stores already and the lowest draft was six. I just did today. I did three last week and we had, I think, eight for the first two and then six for the final one on that Saturday. But that was a store that didn't really have it's a small, newer store. So it didn't really have a ton of players who wanted to just hop right into SWU. A couple guys who like tried it, but they haven't really jumped fully into it yet. I I'm lucky to be in the center of FFG world and the Twin Cities here in Minnesota. Shout out to all the uh, Twin Cities players. And I have been really sad because I haven't got to go support my local scene. I've been had some few things in life going on, but we, I am lucky in this area. We've got events almost. Every, we do have events every day of the week in the Twin Cities. So if you are in the Twin Cities, you can find a store to play. I plan on playing at the Source in Roseville and doing some draft at Dreamers Vault in Champlain on Mondays. So I'm really looking forward to Monday and doing my first draft in person. Nice. I I've been playing. I haven't gone too many times. This is just to a couple drafts so far in uh, in Kansas City. There's I think there's I think I believe four different stores and I think they do weekly play on different nights. So there's like four different weeknights that you can go play. So I've gone on Thursday on um, both nights. It's pretty crazy. So so last week I went to draft and we had an eight person draft and we had I think there was two or three other people there just hanging out and playing premiere, you know, at the weekly play. I went tonight and there were two full eight person drafts there. And then there was at least four or five other people Super playing Fargo. premiere premiere on the side. And it was awesome, and they had just gotten product, and so everybody got stuff to draft, yes. and, yes, and they're, yes, yes, they're yes. giving they're giving out prize packs and like pack per win, and also just a participation pack. The draft was like twenty bucks, so yes, yeah, so, yeah, ton of fun. Super thrilled to see that like jump just in a week, like the increase of number of people playing the game it was so sick to see. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as Carbon. I've gone to a couple of drafts here in the past couple of weeks here in Fort Worth. At the collectic, or at collectic, collected. Sorry, I can't speak right now. <laughs> but anyways, I've crushed it both times. But oh, uh, there's a really sad story that I really don't want to get into about the second draft, though. <laughs> so, so well, the, the good thing about like there, are, well, it's one thing well, you can't talk. skip the sad story. You got to make it tell it now. The mm. listeners are wanting the sad story. Let's just say that I had a 33% chance that it showcased Palpatine. And, and you got it, right? No, I did not. Oh, I'm lucky. Mm, get him on the next one, boys. Get him on the next one. Womp, 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 womp. Oh, like I go 3 0 in the draft, but I miss out that in the prize pack. And I basically felt like I lost. Could Tell it be? Me about it. My draft tonight, I finally beat the person that I kept losing to in the finals. Went three and zero, felt good. I open up my packs. I pull a command, which I don't have any of. So I was like, "Oh, great! My first command, excellent. It's not a money card, but it's a card that I still need and want to play for Twin Suns. Fantastic." Then the person who I kept losing to opened up their pack, and then the pack after I opened my command, they show me a Boba Fett and then a foil command. So I still lost to him somehow. <laughs> you know, get him, get him on the next one, bud. Get him on the next one, boys. So, so th there's a this is a good correlation. There's some games which come out and they have all their boxes sell out and they then don't have any local scene looking at you, MetaZoo. And that is a problem. Clearly, Shade. clearly, as we're hearing, we're getting some local action. It is still early, though. We got to remember, don't get cocky. And it is still early. But I'm, I'm actually going to a, a tournament this Saturday for the first time, yeah. some premier tournament. A little a little thing there, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to try out our boy IG there at the Geek Out in Burleson. We're going to see how that goes. So I heard he was a D-tier leader, though, that he's not mm -hmm. very good. He's super trash, but I think he might be no. fun to, to beat up my, my locals with. So we'll see. Okay, we'll, see okay. we'll see. So, so having locals to play at is really, really nice thing. And let's hope that that keeps growing. One thing that we're going to see, though, is, and it's still early, does this game have what it takes? 
I know for me, when I first was looking at the game, I was thinking, can this game be a top 10 game by the end of the year? Now I'm asking myself, and it might be a little bit hype, can SWU be a top five TCG by the end of the year around set three? By the end of the year? Mm, maybe not. I don't know. Well, how are we ranking this, right? That's that's kind of my, is it like just pure numbers, like it sold more than Pokemon and Magic and all, and, and was one of the top what? five sellers of the year? That's going to be tough for me. I don't think that's going to be the case. It's not cracking top three, but like no. the number, f- but you might could crack the number five. Like what is the number five? So, so let, let's, for those that aren't familiar with other TCGs, maybe this is your first TCG. Welcome. Thank you for playing Spoo. It's a great game. Uh, but typically, and when we look at TCGs, there's considered the top three, the three big boys, and that's Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Then after that, they were made, uh, bef- not even this century, they were made in uh, <laughs> made before the year 2000. That's, Some of that's you, an you interesting know, way of putting it, yeah. May not have been born when they were out. So yeah, they are, I was, they I was are, not alive. Yeah, I was literally <laughs> not alive <laughs> when these games were here. They're ancient tier at this point, and they're still strong. Magic's definitely probably your most ubiquitous card game. Pokemon's your biggest collector game. So Magic's definitely more of the playing aspect. Pokemon's a tier of collecting. Yu-Gi-Oh! is definitely a game that has its moments, and currently it's on a down moment. Yu-Gi-Oh! is is one of the games of all time. It is. It it, it is interesting because it doesn't have a rotation in its format. All this to say that these three games have lasted for over 20 years and so they have a big staying power it's going to be very hard to knock one of those three off if it's any it's going to be Yu-Gi-Oh. Actually, I, think, I don't even know if it's going to knock Yu-Gi-Oh off i think we'd be lucky to hit like one piece off i think like yeah. one piece is the game that i think swoo has the best chance in year one to knock off but i think it's going to be a very very hard ask because as someone that helps out in in the game store we had a one piece release this thursday or friday i think it was and man literally doors opened and we had five human beings coming in and we were immediately sold out of one piece so so after the big three is typically you can maybe look at dragon ball or flesh and blood has been a very popular flesh and blood came out in just before the pandemic i think on the kickstarter happened before the pandemic and it is pretty popular pretty big it's one of the few non-ip games to be on this list so that's our next tier of tier of card games it, it could definitely outpace something like Lorcana. so um, and then the, and like the hope maybe is that it can surpass the bandai games like one piece and dragon ball yeah and I'm, then the, I'm, I'm unsure about that honestly like we'll we will see in the first year unlikely i the, mean the, here's the thing about the top three right is that to be fair we can't unseat that until at least five years from now because the thing about those games is that they've done it year over year consistently. So just because we have one better year doesn't mean that the game is then surpassed them in the rankings of TCGs. In my mind, you know what I mean? Like it's like they've done it for so long, you have to then do it consistently for years, and then you can say you've passed. Them. Now, can we maybe get Rookie of the Year? Sure. When we look Absolutely. At, when we look at new games, and Lorcana won't be necessarily a rookie, but they are still in their first year. So you've got Lorcana. Yeah. Who's definitely get competing? It seems more like with the Pokemon in the collectability casual scene, and they have a very good multiplayer format that I think will stay around. But you've got One Piece, who which is blowing up and selling out, and they're a really hard thing to beat. And then you've also got things like Altered coming out, Altered TCG, and it Grand just got Archive. bumped back a little bit. And Grand Archive is another one. Altered has a like unique, different distribution model, and so these are kind of the new games that Swoo's competing with. I mean, if you're counting Larkana for this year and not last year, I, I think it'll be a close race, and it would be very interesting to see which game actually wins. Um, I will say, even though I have played Larkana, I do own some Larkana cards because my girlfriend, I saw their four, set four reveal, which came with a really cool trailer and some really great set art. Like, FFG, you need to see that, and you need to be like, okay. We gotta, we gotta up this now. I want cool trailers announcing let, releases. Let them play, right, bro. All right, bro. No, it was sick. Did you guys watch it? It was so sick. I'm sorry. No, I, no, I didn't watch the Lorcana release trailer, bro. It was, that wasn't. In, it was so sick, bro. It was. I will have to take your word for it, my friend. I'm gonna link it in our chat here, so I'm gonna make you watch it. So, so what I'm hearing is that there's a. It's a competitive market. 
And that's a good thing, though, that when we look at when Pokemon, Magic, and Yu-Gi-Oh! were big, it was a competitive market there. There was a card game winter. A lot of card games died out. Those three survived. And if you survive one Ice Age, it doesn't mean you're going to survive another one. Yeah. Well, I definitely think, sorry, Carmen. I definitely think that this, that Magic is definitely in like a downtick. And, and I hear a lot of uh, uh, Magic players who play the game that like Swu has a lot of like Magic feels. And so I think it can definitely capture some of the Magic players that have fatigue from all the sets that's being released. And like really no one's playing constructed or standard which is the same thing as premiere in magic really it's a very like low volume of player format uh, i know at least even myself locally there's very few stores that even run like fnms anymore that are actually standard they're typically like modern or or edh now the, so. for those non-magic players those are other formats in either construct and constructed of regular cards just with a different pool of cards you're able to play yeah so it's Standard is like Premiere, like I said, it would be like six, the most six recent sets. And then Modern is like, it opens it up pretty wide to like a, like, like I think it's like four or five ish years of sets. And then EDH is like Twin Suns, where it's a singleton format and you have a commander, et cetera. Yeah. Well, I will, I will, I have not been talking too much during this, this little segment because I, this is my first physical game. So I have a lot of a physical card game, right? So I have less experience than, than these other guys for sure but i guess my my two cents on the topic is that just from what i've seen just from the like the the back end support that this game is getting when i compared to when i look at other games especially the the supporting limited just with the packs like a lot of these games that we've talked about i as far as i understand just did not support limited at first or aren't necessarily designed to be played in limited or can you is, Arcana. Yeah, this game is built from the ground up to support that, right? Literally, the packs are intentionally designed to support that type of gameplay, which is awesome. And then they've also got this in place from like, like, you know, a year or so before the game even came out. We've got like the the competitive OP, the weekly play system, the store showdowns, etc. This competitive roadmap is is lined up right for this game which I also think is a huge deal. So just those two factors are giving me really good hope that that this game will crack like that top five and be around for, you know, many years to come. And I know like we talk now about how the top three Magic Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh are the big three. And I, I agree that I don't think that Swoo, it's going gonna, I mean, to take probably at least five years for any of those games to truly die and not be a big three. But I think it's it's wrong if we limit ourselves to think, oh, there can only be three top tcgs there can be more and i think that's where if swoo's going to have that ability to kind of be considered one of the top dogs it's not going to have to be oh it's got to take out Yu-Gi-Oh or oh it's got to try to beat magic it can be a top four top five there can be space for multiple games that are all as long as the player base is there and supporting it and so that's what i think really would be the goals if we can survive the test of time and we'll see how we do and maybe we can be a big five yeah well, it's up, it's up to all of us too, right? To to support the game, show up to events, show up to tournaments, buy product, et cetera, right? To to make it that. And and I for one am, am planning on supporting it as much as possible. So but for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of weird, but I'm I'm low key getting hype for set two. I didn't think I'd be saying that <laughs> this early on. Yo, Especially you said that. that, right? Yeah, <laughs> like this is me, Safe boys. It. So like this Wait, it's kinda getting it's kinda getting serious. Dudeness is the person who was like, I don't want any set to sp-. like we got the Gideon and the Mando reveal. And he was like, art. no, that was way too early. We, we don't, I don't want any art. This is bull crap. This is so early. This is oh, no way. And I'm like, my guy, it's just art. Like you had to kind of guess and in, in, that, that they were going to be in the set just from like the title of it. Like you could probably say, wow, ah, Mando's probably likely to be in the set, right? Like it's, it's a good, it's a good guess. Right. So I don't know. I thought it was, so it's it, that's pretty awesome that he's excited for set two. Yeah, Maybe I'll we'll get a spoiler tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> he's still not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> for those that this is their first TCG, it is a fun experience when you get some new stuff and now you're recooking with your decks and thinking of how oh how's this going to interact with my old stuff. It's just something to consider. And they, these the three sets were all made together, the first three sets. So the developers have kind of curated this experience for us. 
we'll move on from the appetizers to the main course next. Awesome. Uh, so I think we can all safe to say that pretty good that we think that it, there's the legs in this game. And if it survives, we can get a top five TCG. Definitely. Circling back to what we talked about earlier with our local scene, how what are the events you guys have played and what have you guys been playing? Draft. Uh, yeah, draft. <laughs> so I went to one. I went to one last week. I talked about on last week's pod. I went to one today as we're recording this. It was a ton of fun. I got, my dad got to play draft with us for the first time. I drafted a a pretty strong green Krennic deck. I was, I was kind of Krennic surprised. Krennic the boy. Yeah, we were. And I just got I got so many strong common cards. I think the, the MVPs of the deck by far was I got three copies of Mercenary Company. Six cost yeah, five five green with just ambush and overwhelm. That card put in so much work, especially in Krennic, because it would kill something and then it would have six power. And I had yeah, like st- I had artists. strike true as well. So I oh, no. went, ambush killed something, claimed initiative without swinging to like and then strike true immediately to kill my opponents unit and it was just it was really tough to deal with so and so that deck was really good so i went yeah i managed to go 3-0 in that draft and then i got, I got a home one in one of my prize packs which is pretty sick so and I, I wanted that card for a deck so all great experience i got to meet meet play with some of the same people some new people so yeah great time i, I love that story about mercenary company because i think that card is Top, it's really, top, it's top, really top, good in limited tier. for sure. Yeah. So the more that. copies of that card in your deck, the higher your win percentage. So I will say I drafted four times so far, and I'm planning on drafting tomorrow will be my fifth time. All four times I have opened Boba Fett. Um and I've played him three times. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Or Boba, Boba Fett leader? Boba Fett leader, yes. No, yeah, leader. I heard I heard unit and I was like, what in the no, world? No, 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 no. I'm not that crazy. I'm not like woo. We pulled two Boba Fett's in the same. Draft. Yeah, we don't we don't talk about we were on this podcast. I just did. Shout out to my homie. But he, so I then there was the third one where I was like, I've drafted Boba Fett back to back days because I did my first three drafts were like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So on Saturday, I was like, no, I can't do it three days in a row, even though I absolutely should have because I still drafted. I think I took Cassian instead. So I ended up going. But I had like a. If I t- wanted to draft, I had a disgusting Boba Fett deck. Like it would have been nuts. I just chose not to. So, little tip there: always go Boba Fett if you can. He's really good. Don't pass I mean, him. In my last draft on Monday, I went Boba Fett and got like all the good yellow cards, and went three and zero. Easiest games of my life. But yeah, sounds about right. Him or Krennic, I think, are the two best leaders right now for draft that I've been seeing have the most success at least in my local scene i mean tarkin um, too though i mean tarkin I, I haven't seen that many tarkins it's, i'm gonna be honest with you it's been people playing krennic green over tarkin mm, and it's, over it's, tarkin it's, blue it's like the same difference but you get the experience. yeah i don't it yeah mass. and it could be incorrect you know what i mean like but it's just that's what i've been seeing i mean that's that's been my two wins have been tarkin and boba my two wins were cassian because i had that was a six person draft and, and only two of us went hero and the other person that went hero went yellow blue and I was in green red. So like we just got everything we wanted. Like I think I got like I got I passed Bale twice and saw him a third time and still <laughs> passed him. Yeah, because you shook because I hate that guy, dude. <laughs> Stupid card. Get uh, I, bailed. So I wanted to ask you guys real quick. Are you guys at your draft events? Is it best of one or best of three? Best of one. Uh, we've done both. Uh, some stores have done best of three if we have more time. Some stores do best of ones. It kind of just depends. Like tonight we did best of ones because we started at like seven o'clock and we didn't want to be there all night. So we just did best of ones. But the one on Saturday where we had more time was at like noon or one o'clock. We had like most of the day. Like, oh, let's just do best of threes just because we have more time. So that was fine. The only problem that we had with the best of threes was we had a little kid who that had a healing deck. And when I say a healing deck. I mean, he had like he had the big ship that, re- that heals eight. He had like two or three making openings. He had two restored arcs. He had Kane and Jarus, like anything you could think of that heals in hero blue and hero yellow. He had it in his deck. I had to do 50 damage in one game to kill him. Yeah, this kid sounds like a Chad, bro. Dude, he was awesome. Like he was, he was like 10, <laughs> dude, but he was just like the most baller little kid that I played against in like a long time. Cause usually like little kids, I play them. I try to be nice and like, I'm just like, ha ha ha. No, I was like, oh shit, I might lose this game. I have to like focus on <laughs> not lose. Oh my God. That's great. 
it might have been just best of one so far um which i think which i think works good we have had today there was a my dad's game one took a really long time it was so long he's playing i think krennic yellow versus grand inquisitor blue it was just like a super heavy control match and it just went down to like they were both had so much damage on their base too it's pretty crazy so but yeah it's a yeah, ton of fun i've been a sad boy and not played any irl events and i really want to but i've been able to play on some webcam leagues and i Ended up getting a 2-1 victory with my Cassian deck today over a Vader deck that was pretty, pretty cool. fun. And yeah, it was very close. It came down to some a last some last clutch damage. And so I was happy with that. But I'm really excited for next week when I get to go play some in real life events. You know what I think is really cool about this game? Is like, yeah, you have like the top tier decks with like Iden, Boba Fett, and, and Sabine, but like once you get past those three, it's really just like you can play almost anything else. And it's like at least like reasonably competitive. Like, I don't think there's any deck that's, like, just absolute trash tier. You can't play it. You'll never get a win against anything. Like, there, there's there's no, like, trash layer. That, that's that's pretty awesome to say for set one. That's hard to do. So just want to give some props, FF. Yeah, because I, I plan on going to my tournament this Saturday. I mean, I, this will be... will have already taken place by the time this comes out. But with IG-88, right, the kind of presumed worst, if not, you know, definitely one of the worst, leaders in the entire set and i'm hoping to surprise some people and get a few wins there all right so one more thing this is coming out on monday so i will have already been at pax but hopefully if you went to pax east i will be there come say hi come hang out let's play some twin sons i love it also we are now on apple podcast shout out to faith for figuring that out for us so I know we have a couple of people who asked us about that, so we are on there now. So check us out on Apple Podcast as well, as usually Spotify and YouTube, all the other jazz are still there as well. So Faith, take it away. For fans of our podcast, Elt Maneuver is in the finals of Unplayable Showcase Series. When that video releases, show your support for us with hashtag Faith and Faith in the comments of that video. Thank you for all the support you have given us. It is more than we expected, and we are blown away. We are taking next Monday off for the holiday, and we'll be returning Monday, April 8th. We look forward to seeing you then. Let us know in the comments how your local scene is doing. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on Outmaneuver. Maneuver.